Hey, welcome back all you DIYers. Today, we're working on the RV and we're getting ready to shut her down for the season. So, hey, let me show you what I do on my RV. Let's get started. All right, so here we are, end of the season and getting ready to shut everything down, getting everything ready for the winter. And a few things I do to get ready for the winter. Um, of course, got to go through and flush all the lines. I do run some RV antifreeze through all the lines, and all I need is I should get by with a couple gallons and my drill to uh, access a few panels. Um, again, we are working on a Passport 30, 3350 BH. So I do have a bunkhouse 33 feet long, and uh, we'll go in and uh, we'll start showing you some of the things I do to get things started. So. Let's go inside. All right, so here we are back inside and going down here. Underneath the stove is the access to the back of our uh, water heater. Now, it could be different in other RVs. Like I said, this is a 3350 BH uh, Keystone Passport, and this is the way we handle this. Like I say, others can be definitely different, but here on the back side, we first want to start out by making sure we bypass the water heater. And it's just simply, just a simple turn of that valve right there. It stops the water from going inside the water heater and coming back out. There is a check valve here at the top, so we don't have to worry about that. So now when I run water through here, the hot lines, it just comes up here and back out this way. So we won't have to worry about that. And of course, you want to make sure that you uh, drain your water heater. Uh, that little plug right there goes right up. Oops, sorry. That little plug right down here goes up inside of there. And I just have a large socket that fits right up underneath there. And I already had mine drained from the last time we went out. I always try and drain my water heater um, each time we go out just to make sure we don't have any funky water in there for next time. The other thing is, uh, go ahead and make sure that the the main uh, water tank and stuff just right up here so my fresh water tank is completely empty as you can see there and so everything should be empty everything should be good so we uh, now we'll go back in to where the pump is and get that prepared all right so in here here is where my access to my uh, water pump for the RV is at. As you can see, I've added a couple of things in here um, from years past to make things a little easier for myself. Um, I've added a T in here. Um, they wanted you to add to be able to pull the pump piece apart and uh, use the uh, adapter on the end of that pump. And I just didn't want to keep taking things apart I just wanted to make it simple, so I added, let's see if I can get in here to see, if you can see down here, oh, where the hell is it at, there it is, down there at the very bottom, let's see, right there where that white and blue hose comes in, there's a T right there. As you can see, I have this shut off right now, so my access to the, uh, to the, uh, um, to these bottles I have that are going to pump through this. So what I do is there's a second valve that is, goes right down here. This is what accesses the tank. So I'm going to get that one completely shut off and I will turn this one on. So when I turn the pump on over at the wall, it'll actually pump from the tank here up and in here. So I am going to go turn that pump on. There it goes. Start seeing that's starting to go down. I do have a valve open right here in the bathroom behind me. So here shortly I'm actually running that through the hot water right now. So that should be turning pink here soon. Once that turns pink then I can go ahead and shut that off. Turn a little pink now. There it is. And we can go ahead and shut that one off. Go back and double check. Make sure we didn't pump that whole jug out. 
All right, so I went ahead and switched the other jug out just because make it easier with not worrying about running out. So that one, that one is quick. So I'm right here close. I'll check the water in here. That one's pink. Not a bad idea to turn it on and make sure that your shower head here has something in it. You don't want that to go bad. So shut that off. Toilets are already done too. Of course, we're running cold water back here, so we're a little farther away. It takes a little longer. And there it is. Of course, we want to make sure that even our outdoor faucets are also. Clean. As you've seen, I already changed this out for something different before. See any outdoor kitchens or anything like that, we want to make sure that we have stuff ran all the way through those also. Looks like we got pink coming through that one. A little pink here. Oh, let's see. We want to make sure we run them just for a few extra seconds because sometimes we want to make sure it gets all the way out there. Turn a little pink there. There we go. Double check the other one. Yep, we're good. All right, so there we go. That's uh, that's pretty much all I do on here on my passport on my Keystone Passport 3350BH um, because I do have mine plugged in. Um, all winter long um, so the battery tender does take care of the battery don't have any issues with it's been what, like four years now and I've never had an issue with that um, but if you do store yours without being plugged in of course you need to pull the battery from it and anything like that also make sure go ahead and check your refrigerator make sure there's nothing in there that needs to be taken in make sure you didn't leave any beer or pop or something like that stored away somewhere because uh, if it gets really cold where you're at uh, they're not gonna last so um, otherwise, uh, hey, like always, like it, share it, subscribe to it. If you got any other comments or questions that hopefully maybe I can help you out, let me know. Otherwise, hey, we'll see you guys next time. Later.